Hey everyone, this is Prashad Parthiban. Today I'm going to talk about cloud computing. As we all know, most of the companies are moving towards cloud. So I thought of giving a overall introduction about cloud and kind of you know benefits of cloud computing. To start with, what is cloud computing? What is the definition of cloud computing? It's nothing but delivery of computing services. It could be networking or computing assets, storage or database over the internet for a pay-as-you-go basis. When I say pay-as-you-go, like how much ever that you are going to use, that's the only amount that you are going to pay. So that's the overall definition of cloud computing. Delivery of computing resources over the internet as a pay-as-you-go basis. <coughs> now, we know we have been using traditional computing and there are customers who are moving towards cloud. Let's see the difference between traditional computing, which is on-premises versus cloud computing. To start with, the first difference is on-demand self-service. When you go to cloud, you as an admin can deploy the servers and everything can be done by the clients without a need of human involvement. Whereas on-premises, it also needs human involvement. Like every time when you want to add a server, an admin has to do it ma manually, but in case of Cloud computing is or more of console type, like where you log into cloud vendors like AWS or Google Cloud and then do it yourself. Second thing is broad network access. We all know as long as you have a good internet speed, you can access this cloud services anywhere across the world. Whereas when it comes to traditional way, either you have to be in a company environment or you have to use a lot of access like VPN to access those services. Third one is resource pooling. We know most of the cloud vendors, they are not just supporting you, they are supporting a number of clients. As a result, you have a very cost effective method. So whereas in case of traditional approach, it's only single tenant. Whatever the servers that you have, it's going to be used only by you. And if you do not use it, you are going to waste those servers. Rapid elasticity. Say you have some servers or databases or computing services. During the month of December, your business is growing at a peak level. Now, you no need to worry about anything in cloud computing. By default, the cloud vendors are in going to increase your servers, you are going, they are going to increase your database and everything else. Whereas, if you go to traditional way, you cannot do that. Whatever the limit that you have decided prior to the installation, that's the only limit that you can use. Measured service. Everything that you use is measured. Like if you use for a particular month, for like one week or two weeks, you're going to pay only for those services. Whereas in case of traditional, it's not that way. If you have a service, even though you use it or not, you're going to pay for those. These are the pretty much difference between cloud as well as traditional way of you know, maintaining the computing services. Now, what are the different cloud service types, right? The start, to start with, the first one is private cloud. This is where the cloud vendors are going to have their resources specific to one client like any servers or databases will not be shared with any other clients it will be shared only to those clients but still these end customers can do the self-service they can log into their cloud vendors they can you know, request for anything that they want just that the services or servers will be specifically dedicated to one client coming to infrastructure as service in this environment you will have your application data or you will be maintaining your middleware uh, because you have your own programming languages but the cloud vendors will be responsible for the you know backend database services or anything like you know maintaining the data centers so that is what called as infrastructure as services platform as service here you no need to even maintain the middleware like say if you are using a java what will happen is they will provide you eclipse backend database all that you need is what is the logic that you have to develop you as a developer go into that platform as service, develop it and then everything will be maintained by the cloud vendor. But as infrastructure as service, say if you use some specific products like Duck Creek or Guidewire, they have their own tool and products. So they will just use the data center servers in, and they will have their own middleware and everything else. That's what we call it as infrastructure as service. They are giving us the infrastructure as a service, whereas here they are giving the platform itself as a service. <coughs> So software as service, this is something that we use day to day like Gmail, Salesforce. So even though we use those services, those services are 
by default in cloud but we do not know that like it's been ma maintained between the cloud vendor and the companies so we just use it so here we are not going to maintain anything just use the service from the cloud environment so the final point is we have seen what is the definition of cloud we are compared between cloud versus traditional we have seen what are the different types of cloud computing now what are the benefits because why do customers want to move towards cloud out of 100 customers nowadays everybody wants to move towards cloud if they want to do that there could be a lot of benefits right so let's see one by one <coughs> traditional capital expense for variable expense so if you are in on premises to set up the initial setup buying the server buying the databases setting up it will be taking like three to four months of time and it involves a lot of cost whereas in cloud computing it's in minutes so you go there you select whatever the server you want and whatever you know, the resources you want and you use the variable like how much ever you use that is the what you are going to be paid for whereas in case of traditional it's not the case if you have selected a server for three months even though you use it or not you are going to pay for those massive economics of scale like you no know, it's not just you are going to use this for one environment or anything else if you use cloud anywhere across the world you can use a cloud computing as long as you have the good internet speed stop guessing the capacity which is a very very important point right like you know, <clears throat> as a customer we know even in agile world you think that you can complete your user stories within like given story points but always it exceeds due to various factors same thing if you have your servers if you have a database you plan for something for various factors it could increase when it increase you no need to worry in cloud by default cloud computing vendors will going to increase the capacity increased speed and agility very important point if you want to deploy a server it's in minutes agility right like if there is a change in need your, your environment in such a way that your requirements are changing your expectations are changing so cloud is the best thing like you can go deploy the servers or operating systems quickly at the same time if you want to change it you can change it anytime <coughs> money spent on data centers as i told you if you want to use on premises you spend a lot of money on initial stages like data centers and databases which can be removed when you use cloud computing Go, go, go global in minutes like if you want to extend your business across the world you just go <coughs> to cloud computing services like aws cloud google they have the services across the world and you can go global within minutes i hope you like my training videos if you like my training videos please do subscribe to my youtube channel have a great day bye bye